What's up, guys? Jay, more than after kill, and I'm back here on Borderlands 2. And this is gonna be my review of the brand new Borderlands 2 DLC Headhunter Pack number three. How Marcus saved Mercenary Day. Now, I'm gonna reserve a lot of my personal opinions in this video because, unlike the Waddle Gobbler DLC, my personal opinions clash with the fact that this is actually a pretty decent, well put together DLC. And right off the bat, it is Christmas themed DLC. Even though it says Mercenary Day, don't let that fool you. This is a Christmas themed DLC. And most of the enemies in this DLC are original game reskin characters. Now, I know I threw up a lot of shit about the Waddle Gobbler's reskins, but these reskins are pulled off a lot nicer, a lot smoother, and if you take a look at the Bully Mong reskins, they actually do make a pretty natural transition into Yeti slash Abominable Snowman, and also, you will see in the side mission that there are a really good use of midget loaders as toy presents in the side mission, and that right there is a little bit better than just slapping a face from the guy that's dead in Sanctuary on top of a nomad and making his mouth not move. <laughs> so, anyway, anyway, a lot of the bandits and Goliaths that are just in winter gear and they're called Snow Goliaths, though, and that, that's kind of lame, but I will give that a little bit of a pass because the snowman enemy are completely original and they do have their own death animations and walk animations. So, uh, you know, you got to take that a little bit of a trade-off. They did bring us some new animations, new death animations, and uh, I'll take that. I'll take that. I'll, I'll let you guys get away with that gearbox. <laughs> so, anyway, the story inside this DLC is a tad short, but... It's still longer than the Waddle Gobbler if you don't count Grandmom's Tour 25 minute mission because that right there is bullshit. <laughs> so, anyway, anyway, out of all the Headhunter packs, this one feels most in sync with the uh, locations that you're gonna see on Pandora from Borderlands 2. And that's because everything is covered in snow. And in Borderlands 2, you know, Pandora's like five years later, they are into the winter season. So this feels like a natural, like, I could go right from Windshear Waste, you know, Southern Shelf, uh, Three Horns Divide or Valley, whichever. I think it's Divide that has all the snow. I think Valley is where Doc Mercy is. I, I always mix those two up. But anyway, you get my point. You can go from there into this DLC and you're not going to skip a beat. It's going to feel really well in sync with the game. And I like that. I like the fact that everything feels like it belongs inside of this game. But the boss fight, in my opinion, is probably the hardest out of the three headhunters so far. And I'm not saying, I'm not saying it's incredibly difficult, but the snowman has quite a few attacks and effects that you don't see in Borderlands 2. One of the most notable things that you will see during the fight is that as you hit him or as he hits you, his face changes during the fights to the same head customizations that you actually get inside this DLC because each head for each character inside this DLC has a different expression on his face. And I like the fact that they, they kind of kept with the, uh, you know, whole motif there and gave him facial animations while you're shooting him. And that, that really little details like that really do make a big difference. But one of the most annoying things is that he has like two or three attacks that will slow you down, that will immobilize you, and then he follows that up with a few attacks that will health gauge you very easily. So he seems to have a little bit more health than Jock at OP8. I don't know, I don't really go into the game files to uh, go ahead and check that out, but it seems like that he has a little bit more health, he's a little bit harder, and the fact that he reduces movement speed when he hits you, it's a boss fight that you can realistically find yourself in a real bad spot really quick, especially the fact that he does have a cliff there, and he does have a huge knockback attack that does have, uh, you know, the penalty of insta-death from getting flung off that goddamn motherfucking cliff. <laughs> so, anyway, overall, this DLC is technically better than the Waddle Gobbler. The areas are prettier, they're more open, it's not so cluttered. I like the fact that the boxes in this DLC are reskinned as presents and everything. They did a good job of pulling everything together with the reskins from the, uh, you know, original game. And the reward for beating the bosses 
two huge boxes that hold enough loot for four or five boxes. My only complaint about that is that it can be a pain in the ass trying to see what type of weapons spawn on the top portion of the box because it can't see the fucking beams. God damn it. <laughs> so it's uh, actually a pretty good box though. They they do, I have seen people pulling legendaries out of there. I haven't pulled a legendary, but I did get a few E-Techs out of this. And uh, it seems a good place to get class modern relics for those of you guys that are still leveling up that just bought this game on Game of the Year or PlayStation Plus for free this month. So, like I said, it's a good DLC. My only gripe with it is Gearbox has a habit of giving fan service to very specific customers. They did it first with uh, UVHM and Digistruck Peak. They're kind of singling out the, uh, you know, hardcore player, even though that makes up the minority of their player base. And then these DLCs, they're going towards mostly American customers that celebrate these holidays. And it's the same thing with the, you know, the loot hunt. And the uh, they also have that mobile app right now, Loot the World. It seems like Gearbox just really... Really needs to open her eyes that this game was played worldwide. And not everybody, not everybody wants a Christmas themed DLC. But we'll talk about that in another video. So is it worth $3? Yeah, it's worth $3. I, I would rather buy this DLC again than play through Grandma Motherfucking Tour. <laughs> so anyway, my name is Jay. More than Afterkill. Make sure you guys rate, comment, subscribe. I want to thank guys for watching. If you could leave a thumbs up on this video, I would highly appreciate it because it gives me motivation to make more videos for you motherfuckers that watch my motherfucking videos. So uh, if you're wondering if you should buy this DLC, I think it makes a pretty decent addition into the game. Even if you're not really big on Christmas or you don't celebrate Christmas, they, I mean, they have a boss. It's pretty fun to fight. Nice areas and a pretty decent uh, chest run at, at the end of the DLC. So like I said... My name's Jay, more than after kill. Thanks for watching, and I'm gonna see you guys later.